Okay, great. Any changes to the consent agenda, Paul? You want to withdraw anything? Uh, item seven. Okay. Got a question on the uh, tax collection. <laughs> I just signed three checks. Tell me, tell me what's going on. Or tell us what's going on. <laughs> Um, the appraisal district is here. This is Jerry and this is Jake from the appraisal district. They have, you know, they implemented that new software. And uh, for some reason, mode 67, we cannot get balance. We've audited all the way back from the beginning. Then they had some changes over there. In like, the beginning. From when they implemented the software. Okay. okay. So they're going, to, they were looking at the old software, making sure everything and is balancing and and um, I sent them a file again. Sherry and I had already audited the district a couple months ago, three months ago, maybe. Yes. Um, we were fine. We couldn't find an account. So now I had our software send a file over to them, and they're matching up accounts with accounts to make sure everything is right. The problem is on the report is that I haven't been able to refund anybody because I don't want to go back and ask them for money if it's wrong. So, but the judgments you have, that's what you just signed. Those right. are the judgments. Those those are correct. We know those are right. So, and they're, you know, I have to refund them so we don't have to pay interest. So, there, I have a link, a certain length of time once they're certified by the appraisal district to get them out. And you had to go ahead and sign those, but we know they're right. Okay. At this, as far as the other refunds go, if they've added on a homestead or over 65 or whatever, um, if they're wrong, I don't want to go back and ask these people for money. That's perfectly understandable. Um, how do you know you're out of balance? What's because their totals, their certified totals, and my certified totals do not balance. As far and we break it down by by improvement, land, commercial, you know, business, personal property, and any exemptions that are on um, the total roll. Okay, and if those numbers are out of balance, then we're not balancing with the appraisal district. Look like it's a two percent error, a one percent error. But I shouldn't say error. Difference. One, one percent, I would think. Yeah, it's a percent. Maybe, maybe a little less. We're working on the exact right now. Yes. What's what's the timing on the resolution? What's the timing on what? The resolution. Open like now. <laughs> yes, because we're we're in the process of trying to get uh, 2024 certified as well. And so we yes, sure that's, that's why that's good. we want to make sure that all of the districts do balance so that when we do certify for 2024, the role and everything will still be correct. Are you having any other problems with your software with other modes um, or other we, taxing districts? It's, yes, it is more so as far as the way, because with our new software, what it did was it assigned you account numbers. And so it's that data mapping into the account numbers to make sure that we account for everything on the roll. So yeah, and we're working with each of the uh, tax offices that have shown that they've been unbalanced because right now I believe it is three. We're down to three. Yes. So we're we're a select few, a lucky few. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And and, and uh, a couple of months ago, I think Jeannie and I got it down to one account. And then when we sent over a new role correction, that changes everything, of yeah. course, because then it's starting all over again. Have you gotten any calls from uh, customers and taxpayers? Regarding their refund? Yes. Yeah. Um, and I've explained to them what's going on, and nobody has pushed the, the uh, you know, that they need it right now, or nobody's gotten upset, or, you know. But I just told them that we're, we're going to get them out as soon as we can. Appreciate you uh, resolving this as soon as well. Thank you. We're involved in it because he's our representative, and, you know, he'll come in and ask. You know what's going on, um, and he, you know, we show him, you know, and they, you know, he's involved with them too, going back, feeding up, you know, from what we. But Sherry and I and Jake have been involved, yet yeah, working together, ever since Sherry took over, really before. You know? well, I, I finally see you on a first name basis, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> For a long time. <laughs> all right, that's all I have. May, okay. may I ask one question on page twelve? On the uh, <clears throat> fund uh, six, seven, four, the Bear Branch and Panther Branch drainage improvement, those B and Y bond. One is the grant funds. Now, I know. I think those bond were the grant was in from no 
November of 21 or something. Is there an expiration date on when that grant has to be used? I'm curious. So there, there should not be grant funds. The way the grant funds work is those will be basically reimbursed once a certain project is done. So um, and it was like 1.1 million, you know, 1130. Yeah, 1130. Yeah. So we don't have the grant funds. That's the mechanics of how the, the uh, state handles the grant funds. They come to us in basically a reimbursement once you spent a certain amount of funding. So all we should have in which account we're talking about this Texas class. Yeah, yeah. one zero zero nine and uh, and the fund five yeah. six seven four. One nine. Zero. I was just wondering if, you know, I, if it's okay, as you say, it's when you get reimbursed, once you use it, but it's, is there a horizon date and by which time you need to use I was just. To, well, we had a long um, lead time. There's not a, there's not a deadline in agreement to go up for the project. The bonds are, are just issued as uh, what the term was of those bonds. But uh, we don't have a short time horizon to complete the project because when we went into this, we recognized that there was going to have to be uh, the hydraulic study done to determine if you could get the reduction in the right. surface right. water elevation. So you know, we'll need to go back to the state if for some reason we can't close the gap on the funding differential for what's been discussed now for what was originally discussed, then we'll have to go back to the state and figure out how we would um, address that if we would try to unwind the, uh, you know, basically make back bonds or, or what the solution is. Yeah, I mean, given the discussion we've had about that particular project and the cost going up and it seems like it's not going to get resolved anytime soon, I was just wondering if it's uh, going to be an issue, that's all. Yeah, and <clears throat> thankfully, on these bonds as we talked about before for zero interest. And so it's not like your current interest costs as a result of you know, the time period uh, that's going on. But um, we will have to come to some resolution because these projects, unlike regular bonds that are just issued on the market that you can go to the TC and do a change in use for, because these were issued the tax department, you can't do that. So, uh, okay. that's the issue you want to address. I believe the first payment on that bond is coming due, or yeah, uh, September 1st, by the way, this year. Is it? Okay, okay, thank you. Can we have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So I moved with the discussion proceeding. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Okay, item nine, receive a regular monthly SJR Willis Division report, including updates on operations projects, public outreach. Chris. Report begins on page 21 in your packet. Uh, continues from there. Just a couple of things to kind of highlight. On page 25, you're going to see there's no financials again this month. Uh, last month, you did have financials, but I believe they were up to April 30th. It's the accounting software that we talked about last month. We're able to pay employees, pay vendors, accept payment. But the last thing we're still trying to tweak is the reporting. So I talked to accounting today, and they're hopefully in the next two to three weeks, we'll be able to get uh, financials prepared for the next uh, pre long. Actually, our board directive to them is to have financials it's because y'all don't have financials. I don't have financials. Our board doesn't have financials. So their directive from our board is to get the financials to the board by next month. So no financials this month, but when you do get financials next month, you should get May, June, and July all at the same time. That same information on the financials bleeds into the projects on the next few pages, 26 through, I think, about 30. This invoice to data amounts that you see, they are as of April 30th. Some of those projects are closed out, but we're not going to close them out to we list the actual invoice to date, the final amount. Then we'll mark them as yellow, remove them from the list. 
Last thing I had is the hurricane that came through. I think a few of y'all heard about. We, uh, out of 57 sites, 56 sites lost power. But everything now is currently back on line power, off of generator power, or just house power in general. Um, no major damage across the board. Uh, we had a canopy that kind of folded up and decided to move elsewhere, and then a panel that blew out. So we estimate about less than fifty thousand dollars in damage. No drop in service and uh, no employees hurt. So it's it's always good. Any questions y'all have? I'll be glad to answer. I have one question. Um, Twenty one. You know, I we're familiar with the percent of the, of the blend of groundwater and surface water is. Are you monitoring at all uh, what's happening in terms of subsidence, you know, as a result of the amount of groundwater that's being pulled, you know? We do watch the subsidence as far as the aquifer levels. We twice a year, we pull the aquifer levels and the ones within the woodlands that are 38 wells. Uh -huh. We also check and look and see what the different, uh, what they call cam sites around the woodlands are doing. Mm -hmm. But we do not have an active monitoring reporting system for mm -hmm. subsidence. We'll leave that to Lone Star and then Harrison, Harris, Galliston, subsidence. I mean, just I'd be curious being new, you know, over the last five years or whatever convenient data is just to see how that's changed as a function of groundwater pull. I mean, uh, we do have that. I can get that to Eric and send that because what we've done before is we've shown from about 2010, sometime sooner, where the offer levels were. Uh -huh. And then when we were at like 65% surface water, we'd put that in a little bracket and we showed 50%, 35% back to table. Okay. So y'all can just kind of see what the offers did. Yeah, I'd be interested uh, to see that. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I'll get that sometime. Yeah, it's not a rush. Okay, thank you. And okay, consider an act on the draft 2025 budget. So the budget, uh, in case you need a copy of it, I do have some copies here, but it does not change from what was presented in May. Everything stays the same. Water rate, wholesale water rate, reduction of 2%. Waste water rate stays the same. Those are the you're voting on. The GRP rate, which you do not vote on, but has already been approved by the GRP Review Committee, as well as our board, uh, will be a 7% reduction to the water rate. And then just a reminder, this is a vote to direct your trustee how to vote at the August trustees meeting. Before we uh, get to that, based on your earlier discussion about the software, how do you know you don't have changes? So this information was prepared with the old software. The okay. Biggest thing. okay. So what we're doing is our cutover date for the new budget and everything was May 1st after all of this was prepared. So when I'm looking at the data, I'm looking at the data for the uh, production, for the sales and the wastewater treatment. I'm looking at the revenue dollars more than some of the expenses at this point because I do not have that data. Are you still uh, comfortable and confident in the 4% uh, water loss in the budget? It's aggressive. Say that. I know that. Has your opinion changed since the last discussion? It has not. I'm still a little bit on edge, but I'm still a little bit positive. So I'm hopeful. Let's say the because if you increase it to four and a half, you increase it to five. The dollar amount you're talking about is roughly fifty, a hundred thousand dollars for, for each or oh, half. Yeah, so if you go up half percent, it's like fifty thousand. You go up one percent, it's about a hundred thousand okay. dollars. So I'm not on edge too much, except for the fact that I don't want my prediction to be too far off. Right. Dollar wise, I'm not concerned. All right. Mm -hmm. We have a motion to uh, direct Paul on how to vote on the budget. I would move to uh, recommend that we approve the water rate, water and sewer rates. Okay, I second. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. 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 Okay. Item 11, receive update regarding Bear Branch, Panther Branch. Since last month, there is no update at this point. Um, we're going to try to get the uh, one water group back together. This this next one did not meet this month. Um, last we met and last I reported to you that, you know, in light of the, the cost estimates being increased, uh, we need to find some additional funds. And with, uh, with the hope that we can work through that group uh, to try to go grab some funds somewhere to make up the difference. <clears throat> so that's the next move. <laughs> So we had talked last time about uh, possibly getting a quote from uh, LJA to, to uh, 
come up with what you had talked about in a, uh, a 30, no, a 30 second scenario. exchange in the parking lot. Uh, any any uh, movement on that? Pass it back to Eric. I'm not a part of those conversations. Uh, I haven't seen anything on that. We certainly can. I think they reported that uh, it was going to be five to ten thousand dollars, roughly, as I recall, to run additional model on. I think the Browder is the. Is, are we talking about the Browder track? Yes. And I was thinking less than that. Um, I would just recommend that we get them to fine tune what it would cost to run that additional model and, and see if it could be done out of the existing funds in the project. Okay. Or if it's technically feasible, do we have the uh, township backing to move forward with the project in view of tree removal and that sort of thing? Uh, as far as tree removal or tree? Shrub, shrub tree removal. Um, I don't know if that's been fully vetted, but it certainly has been a discussion. I mean, it's going to take some public education just to get through it. Because there's some that don't care and some some that care more about drainage and some that care more about the trees. So it's just going to be more of an education process. But it was it's definitely been a discussion with the township uh, up until uh, until now. But it would be a different uh, set of um, areas with the proposal oh, to, to do a redo on, well, I mean that all that all looking at the Browder track really is it's just moving that that proposed drainage from the northeast corner down to where it lays, which is south southeast of it. So oh, tree and brush removal doesn't that, change. Is that what you're saying? Sorry, tree and brush removal doesn't mm -hmm. change. Uh, I would they'd have to look at it. I don't know. But I think in that area you don't have as many residential uh, homes that would be impacted. That's true. What, which area are we talking about? And is the area um, downstream of Gossip. Okay. It's out of the out of the woodlands per se, and out of the residential uh, neighborhoods. I don't have a whole lot of confidence that it's going to improve the drainage situation more than what we have or be cheaper, but it definitely would be have some out. impacts in that in the regard of people yes, residents being impacted in the you know, location of where the detention is. <clears throat> yeah, but I think we should follow through with the RFQ. Okay. For his report, Brian, I, can I ask one other? I mean, it may be off the wall, and this is already discussed, but I mean, in terms of the, managing the water level, is it any possibility to d redirect some of that drainage water into Lake Woodlands? I mean, it's a, obviously a big area. It could absorb a lot of water. Uh, and, you know, we're talking about retention ponds. I mean, okay, if you were to raise that a couple of inches, I mean, you certainly absorb uh, a lot of water, I would presume. Is that, have it ever been looked at? I don't know that for sure. You know. My guess is even at a couple of inches, it would be negligible in, oh, in, in the scheme of how much it would store. Um, well, I mean, I, it could yeah. be a fairly easy calculation, but. Uh, I mean, if you're looking for a place to park water, at least in part, I mean, it seems like a, an obvious choice. Uh, I just think that it's it's a negligible volume, um, but that's an easy calculation to do. I'll talk to LJ about that. Just take the surface area. I mean, and you know, of course, you'd have to get permission to raise yeah. the existing dam. And you, you know, the people surrounding the lake would be up a couple inches, but I think after you do the math, it's going to be negligible. Okay. Thank you. Ryan? Ernie's report, I do not have anything additional. I was pulling up, but I wanted to double check on that grant agreement to follow up on Steve's question because there's not anything in the interlocal agreement regarding timing, but I wanted to check the, the grant agreement. We did have a preliminary schedule in there that we will have to follow up with the Texas Board of Development Board on, on the schedule that was in the grant agreement. So that's something we will have to deal with. That part was uh, was put together by LJ, so we'll have to follow up with them. It had a design phase of 131 or 24. 
uh, construction starting at the end of April of this year and completion next year. So we need to follow up with them on that. Uh, nothing else under the attorney's report. Also, uh, the closed session we plan to have for today and visit there. We defer that until next month. Okay. Your manager's report, Eric. All right. Thank you. Uh, just a couple things. I wanted to give a little bit more update on the storm and kind of how we handled it. Um, we lost power mid morning Monday. Uh, power came back on to most of the woodlands on Wednesday. We were working remotely uh, we were able to still receive customer calls and and distribute uh, field personnel to to handle those calls most of the calls that were coming in were from uh, like a tree falling on a house or breaking a water line and they needed their water turned off uh, or a or a tree falling and uprooting the, the line in the yard and them needing their water turned off that was most of the calls um, we were able to, uh, like I said, kind of maneuver. Some of us did or didn't have power, depending on where we were. Uh, but we were able to kind of create a discussion group on through text, and we're able to manage pretty well through it. Uh, our our phone system allows our customer service um, staff to be able to receive those customer service calls uh, during the storm remotely on their phone. So it would ring just like it would ring here. It would ring right to them, and they would be able to to make it um, so we made it through pretty well I think we're going to look at kind of how we did this is my first uh, chance to go through kind of a, a big storm or natural disaster type situation in this position so I think we did pretty well but we're going to look at how we did and see if there's any improvement that we can make going forward uh, several directors from different mods have talked about you know redundancies and backup like sat phones different things like that we don't have that um, but we'll look at it and see if there's something that makes sense. Like I said, we were able to get through it. I know different storms react different ways and different technologies still are or aren't working. Depends on where the damage is and where the electricity is out. So we got through it. So it was a good team effort between SGRA and the WDVA to, uh, to get through it. So uh, we did, did, there was a some misinformation that was put out about boil water notice that was never true. Uh, we, we sent out a public notice uh, early Wednesday morning just to let uh, the, the customers of the woodlands know that uh, the water was safe and uh, uninterrupted during the storm. So I wanted to make sure and then that hit social media uh, platforms throughout the day on Wednesday. So I tried to make sure we got that notice out to the community. So I think it went pretty well. Um, Not that we're looking forward to another hurricane, but I, but I see, you know, in a lot of the drainage areas, there's trees down in a lot of the areas where, you know, you expect water to flow through that could be an obstruction in a, in a future event. So I guess in due course, you'll be going through and clearing that those trees and from some of those places. Yes, in, I guess, mid to late June, I guess it was, we were starting to uh, once a year with our uh, ditch maintenance uh, contractor subcontractor goes out and does kind of a, a look at the condition of facilities and gives us recommendations on on things that they see so mm -hmm. they weren't complete with that and so now we're going to need to go back through and mm -hmm. kind of see where the where the if there's damage or trees or whatever the case may be I would ask that if you are walking around and, and on the ditches and you do see something like that please let us know you know the location and we'll go have it addressed um but ultimately we've just got to start riding the ditches and walking the ditches and finding the finding the things okay the issues um next month we will there'll be a little bit longer uh, discussions we'll have the budget and tax uh recommendations to go through next month so uh, we'll have a lot to go through. Uh, I did want to report and let everybody know that uh, Mike Mooney is uh, retiring, and uh, this will likely be his last uh, round of meetings this month. So we wish him well and congratulate him. He just had his 20 year anniversary a couple weeks ago. So I'm um, gonna, gonna miss him, and uh, he's really helped me out quite a bit. Um, so we are looking for uh, a replacement actively at the moment. So or to come on that, but thank you very much, Mike. Appreciate it. 
And uh, with that, I'll kick it over to John for the communications. Afternoon. Just a couple things to touch on quickly here. Um, we did uh, get those water quality reports out. So those arrived to every customer that was water in the mail. But then we pushed that out through all of our channels because that's such a critical piece for folks to be aware of. And then that will live on the website here where folks can access that at any time. Uh, that uh, Graphic on the left there highlights it how important it is when it comes to trusting your water quality, um, how important it is for folks to hear from us, what a difference it makes in that trust level um, that we communicate with them about those reports and anything water related. Uh, so uh, we, we, we work hard on that. And then uh, on the right there, we'll compare us on how we stack up against the national averages on trust in tap water that we rank. Well above natural average there in, in that trust level. And then just uh, at the bottom of the second page there, I want to make sure uh, pointed out the Woodlands Community Magazine article on infrastructure renewal. Not see that um, to your uh, to your mailbox in the Woodlands Community Magazine. Um, you can still find it online at the township website. He's there on infrastructure renewal. Um, so check that out if you, if you haven't seen it. And then uh, with that, any questions? Thanks, John. Paul, trustees and um, Thank you. Well, before we get into a couple of comments about that, I uh, personally would like to thank the staff for an, another outstanding effort and continue to be amazed that whenever we have these emergencies, it's almost without incident. And so I, I would uh, encourage you to share that with your staff. I appreciate that. And the same holds too for saying your sense of river authority. I saw a few guys grabbing lunch one day and uh, was able to stop and say thank you very much. And, uh, a lot of broad smiles. <laughs> so thank you all for that. And I um, also wanted to thank Mike Mooney for his service. And I know uh, he and I have worked personally a lot of issues and uh, he's been very helpful, very thorough, very responsive and problems get solved and customers get happy. So uh, thank you very much for all your efforts thank you in those regards. One of the items that came up in the um, during the trustee meeting was the seat on the DRP committee. And I believe the uh, comment was to pass any comments on to you, so I'll, I'll do it in an open <laughs> session here. Um, is there any reason we just can't continue with Mike Mooney to be the GRP representative? If, if he is still willing to serve, you know, he is not just because he's not working for uh, Woodlands Water um, doesn't mean that he can't serve on that. In fact, he would need to resign from that uh, position. So it is not automatic just because he's not in. Um, if he if he is willing, <laughs> let's assume he is. <laughs> we can talk. We can talk. Yeah. Are, are, would you be willing? It depends on the. Do I need to come to them for give a report or how? How do you? It depends on what you want. I'd have to think think about it. And of course, yeah. he's done a great job, and it'd be a shame to lose that institutional knowledge if he's willing to do it there may be some big benefits those are my thoughts exactly yeah. also another discussion point was um, the uh, new items for review and the additional five hundred thousand dollars not to exceed five hundred thousand uh, dollars study uh, was going to be approximately a year by the time we got to the point where we could release the uh, RFQ and get the work done. Um, and that passed unanimously you know, at, at the trustee level. Um, and then there was a almost a, a co-effort, uh, somewhat uh, in conflict, and that was presented by Kent Maggard, wanting a 25-year analysis as opposed to the 15-year. So there was some discussion about that and whether or not uh, you'd be comparing, you know, 
apples and apples if you do a 25 year study versus a 50 year. And having sat through those prior sessions, I can tell you it will make a difference. So it's, you know, if, if you want to do that second study after the first study is done to, to validate, you know, the, the first part of that thing, first 25 years, that might be one way to go. But I don't think uh, personally I would be in favor of the uh, doing two studies simultaneously, one with us directing it with short technical staff to begin with, with, you know, with Mike on. So, uh, and those are my thoughts on it. That's all. Any other? That's all. No. Something to add to that uh, on that fourth option, the repair and place option, I have asked uh, Ed to consider doing, even though it, it was presented as all four options, being on a 50 year look is to take that fourth, the repair option at a 25 and a 25, at least to, so those that want to see 25 can get that first half and then expand it to 50. So there's apples to apples. Right. So everybody gets what they want. Very good. Yeah, it's Thanks a lot. Yes. Mm -hmm. Brian, you say we're not going to have That's correct. a session. Okay. Are there any items for uh, place on future agendas? Hearing none, we'll adjourn.